there's genetic influence on weather, certainly at the level of perception. And people say, well, that's just perception. You know, I'm such an optimist. I always think back about the glorious summers I've had and that sort of thing. And other people say, are you nuts? That was the worst summer we've ever had, cold and rainy. But the point is, in a way, my perception of the weather is my experience. It's not just perception. It's also, if I was someone who hated that it's super dreary and rainy, I wouldn't have moved to England. That's the second point. It isn't just perceptions, too. If you have seasonal affective disorder, you probably don't want to live in England. It's, clo it's gloomy a lot of the time. There are some people who use findings like this actually to mock behavior genetics. Exactly They'll say, right. well, look, I did this study and I found that this is X percent heritable and that's impossible. So clearly twin and adoption studies, these are misleading, but they're actually just not thinking uh, clearly enough. They're, yeah. they're not thinking comprehensively enough because they're not realizing the point that you just said, which is they're there's genes and there's environment, yes, and environmental impacts are significant. But many things that you would think of as an environmental impact are actually resultant of our genes in the sense that I make decisions influenced my, by my genes that impact my environment. And then on top of that, the other finding, which is that the genes that cause my parents to parent me in this way might also happen to be the genes that cause me to behave in a certain way. And that's so, so abstract that it might be unclear, but it's possible that the genes that caused my parents to just love reading to me just happen to be the same genes that caused me to love reading. And, and this will probably repeat the cycle in the next generation where I'm going to really enjoy reading to my kids and then they're going to go on to read as well. You know, there's another side to that, that that's important is you're only 50% similar genetically to your parents. So some people say, right. well, yes. how can that be? Because my parents read to me all the time and I was terrible at reading. I had a lot of trouble with reading. But genetics predicts differences within families because you're 50% different from, say, your siblings. And a good example in my family, I learned to read early. I loved to read. My parents didn't go to university. We had no books, literally no books in our house. But in those days, there were public libraries, and I could go to the library even when I was five or six and bring back wagon loads of books. And so I created my own environment correlated with my genetic propensity.